Hey, I'm Stephen McWhorter, and you're listening to Build the Kingdom Podcast. Today, it's just me. I'm sitting in a hotel room where I've been on the road this weekend leading worship and ministering. But I really wanted to stop today and do this podcast because I've thought a lot this week about revival. And I know a lot of the world and country has been thinking a lot about it, especially with what started at Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. It's not far from where I live. On Wednesday, February 8th, Zach Merkribs, who was speaking at the chapel service that day, said that at the end of his message, he just told the students, if you would like to just linger here a while instead of going to lunch, feel free. The thing is, nobody left. They started worshiping, praying, repenting, and there was this very clear and obvious presence of the Lord. And at the time of recording this, it's still going on, and it's been 11 days and 11 days strong. People from all over the country and all over the world have been coming there to experience what God is doing. And I've seen lines blocks long to get into the Hughes Auditorium, which is only so big, And there's no like Christian celebrities there. Nobody's leading worship that's this famous worship leader. It's all students. It's just real. There's no flash. And I love it. But for all those who are celebrating this, there are critics, people that question the validity of this revival. And this is what is so wild to me. I think we pray and we cry out and we long for revival for years. Then something comes and we go, nope, that's not it. Just imagine you're the Jewish people and you've prayed for thousands of years for a Messiah to come. And then he comes, it's Jesus. And you're like, nope, that's not him because that's not what we expected. That's not what we were praying for. This doesn't look right. Can I just say this and please hear me? We have to stop judging a revival and we must start being grateful for kingdom movement. Sometimes I think the thing that's hindering us here is, I hate to say it, but I've experienced, so I know it's real, uh, jealousy. You know, we're like, "Ah, I have worked so hard for so many years to see something like this. And then someone comes along at the 11th hour, someone younger, someone that just started, and they see it. And it's even like a double portion of it. And I think this is not fair. But in Matthew 20, There's this parable of the vineyard workers where the landowner goes out at nine o'clock in the morning and he starts finding workers and he says, come work my vineyard and I'll pay you what is fair at the end of the day. He does the same thing at 12 o'clock. But then later on at five, he goes into town and he sees these people standing around. He says, hey, why aren't you working? They say, nobody's hired us. Well, now I have. Go to my vineyard, work, and I'll pay you at the end of the day. Well, the end of the day comes and he pays everyone, even the one that came at five o'clock, the same amount. The people at nine and 12 were furious. How could you do this? It's unfair. We worked all day and they get the same as us. But this is the response of the landowner, which is really the response of God to us. Matthew 20, verse 15. Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? What if the test of our lives is honoring those who experience what we've prayed for and longed for? One night, my wife took the kids to Asbury. We have an 18-year-old and a 15-year-old, and she wasn't allowed to go in because they were only letting in 25 and younger because it was so packed. And this was a decision of the leadership there because it started with students. They wanted to honor what God was doing. I think that's awesome. When they went in, my wife wasn't allowed to go in. She was fine with it. She sat and prayed and because she knew what it meant to be grateful that our kids are in there experiencing what God is doing. If you're not 25 or younger, you're not a college student, don't be offended by this. Trust that what God is doing, he still wants to do something with you. He still wants to do things in your churches. It's just that he's doing something specific and special in these college campuses right now. Be grateful for it. I don't want to be jealous. I want to celebrate the kindness of God because I know that someday I will blink and be in the presence of my father. And I don't want him to say to me, why did you judge what I was doing? Let me pray. 
Father, I love you. Thank you for what you're doing in the earth right now. Thank you for what you're doing at Asbury. Thank you for what you're doing in colleges all across the country. It's amazing the way your spirit is, is rising up in this younger generation. Father, let it rise up in every generation. I love you and I adore you and I thank you for what you're doing. I don't want to judge it. I don't want to be jealous. I want to celebrate your goodness, your kindness, Lord. Keep doing it. Do it again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, I'm Stephen McCorder, and you've been listening to Build the Kingdom Podcast.